But what a, what a thought that he makes all things beautiful. Amen. Amen. Uh, Brother Dennis, can you just open us with a word of prayer? Our precious Heavenly Father, we come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask that you would bless this service to each and every one of us. You deal with each one and every one of us in a different way. And may we all learn something new that we can take to our feet, to our hands, and go out and witness for the love of Jesus Christ so they can all be born again and saved. We ask all this in his name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. One of them. Amen. How many declares you're one of them? Amen. There are people almost everywhere who hearts are all aflame with the fire that fell at saved by faith, right? So you got you just got to believe you're one of them. Amen. It's by grace we're saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's look to the Lamb of God. Amen. <coughs> if you from sin are longing to be free, look to the Lamb of God. He to redeem you died on Calvary. Seem long. Look to the land. 
senses in our in our body and I think sometimes our eyes can we can be looking the wrong way we need to look to the Lamb of God Amen. for he is the only one Amen. that is able to save us Amen. I've got a revelation Amen I've got a revelation of predestination I got God is my Father. I know where I came from, tells me where I'm going, and the gates of hell can never prevail against it. I got a revelation of predestination. I've got God's my father I know where I came from Tells me where I'm going And the gates of hell Can never prevail against it Join me in that revelation I got a revelation A predestination I got a revelation, God is my Father. I know where I came from, tells me where I'm going, and the gates of hell can never prevail against it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There is a great revelation in that song. You know, if you know where you came from, he's coming back for his own. Amen. Kind of puts a little bit of a hope in us. Amen. Let your word be born. Amen. How many wants a word to be born in your heart tonight? It was a tiny, simple stable, all beaten and torn. Just yield this vessel and let him have his way. 
in the manger of my heart. Let it live in me. Let it start. Live inside this house of clay and mold it every day. Let your word be be Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, we just have a few announcements and some prayer requests. Amen. I'd like to change your order of service. Amen. Just a few announcements first. Uh, let's remember our brother Daryl Ward. It will be with us uh, this Saturday at 6 and Sunday at 10. Amen. Uh, there's also going to be uh, some light snacks and finger food after service. So if anybody would like to bring something, uh, please feel led to do that. And just see Sister Cheryl, if you would, uh, for that. Just let her know what's going on. She's our coordinator. Um, and um, if also, since the service for him is on Saturday, the first service is Saturday, and following we're going to have that Sunday, so we're looking... I think everybody here is a volunteer, but uh, it would be, you know, I wish there was more. The whole church was here because it would be nice to get some new volunteers to help out after service and clean up and do tidy up the house of the Lord. But anyway, uh, whatever your hands feel good to do, do them. Amen. So just looking for that. Also, uh, uh Let's just be in prayer for them services. Let's remember that um, there'll probably be quite a few people here Saturday. Um, so um, God's brought them here. How many believe that? Amen. Amen. So let's make sure that we try to do our best to bring somebody uh, so that they can hear um, what God would have for them. Amen. Also, um, <clears throat> Let's just, uh, in prayer, let's just remember uh, Sister Lori. She's been in bed now for two days. So she's, um, I don't know what, she's got flu or something. I'm staying away because I don't want to get sick. <laughs> so uh, she's just been in bed resting, kind of just trying to take care of herself. So it's just she needs a touch from the Lord. Also for our brother Keith. Uh, he fell and um, uh, got a black eye, and uh, I think he twisted his foot too. So uh, just be in prayer for that. For all us older people, as we get older, you know, we are we are not without complications. And for our sister Tasha, Amen, our our sister uh, Cheryl, all of us that are suffering with uh, just the woes of life, I guess. But uh, also the the Johnsons, too. Uh, let's just remember they're in prayer. Um, you know, sometimes I think I can pray 24 hours a day. And I think that's what the scripture says. A man should always be praying without ceasing. So there's always something to pray about. And, um, you know, just um, in short, just a short testimony. <clears throat> I know that um, our sister uh, Ann had a, I asked her to give a little bit of testimony. Could you, could you just say something now about that uh, sister? Amen. Amen. And also, um, I've mentioned uh, a friend of mine, Bob, Bob uh, Schowler. He fell out of a tree stand uh, a while back ago. I think I mentioned it, uh, the brothers. And um, he broke five ribs, collapsed two lungs, and broke his pelvis. And uh, he w went uh, more than 30 days uh, with a, un being unconscious. And uh, his wife uh, 
emailed me the other other day and said that uh, he's uh, he's uh, regained consciousness. They've taken his breathing tube out of him now, and he's on his way to recovery. So let's just praise God. God is real. Oh, yes, and let's remember Sister Cheryl's dad. Um, I think he, did he trip? He just tripped, but he had knee surgery just before this. So he had his knee replaced, I believe, or, and then he fell, so he hurt his knee again, and plus he broke his ankle and it's got a couple bones in it or something, so pins in it. So uh, let's just keep, keep him lifted up. Amen. I'm sure our sister would appreciate that. Also, our brother Mike called in requesting prayer for his mom. Sister Linda's sugar numbers are exceedingly high, and please remember her in prayer. So let's remember our sister Linda. Amen. Also, our brother Roger, please remember brother James. He is homesick tonight. Pray for the Lord that would touch him. Amen. So let's just go before the Lord tonight. Amen. And um, let's just remember all the missionaries. Uh, that's doing God's work. Um, just pray for one another, and let's just pray for these needs, and uh, uh, I pray that the Lord would just give us revelation tonight through the Word. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come to you, Lord, tonight, Lord God, you are a merciful God. You are a great God, Lord. <clears throat> you are the creator of all things, Lord God, and we know that, Lord, sometimes these things some see so great in our eyes, Lord, but they're nothing to you, Lord God. Lord, you said to come to you. We must come to you by faith, Lord. So we come to you tonight by faith, Lord, for every one of these needs we spoke of, Lord, for, the, for Lord, the, the sicknesses, Lord, for the healings, Lord, that are needed here, Lord, for the deliverance that is needed, Lord, amongst uh, your people tonight, Lord. Lord, and, and just for all the testimonies, Lord, we just pray that they will just increase our faith, Lord, increase them that have it, Lord, God, to know that you're still the same God yesterday, today, and forever, Lord Jesus. And, Lord, as we go tonight, Lord, and we receive your word, we, Lord, we would just pray, Lord, that your spirit would be upon us, Lord, that we would just bring revelation on your wings, Lord God, that we might leave here closer to you, Lord. Bless our brother John as he would prepare the word, Lord, and prepare his heart for your word, Lord. In the precious name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Hallelujah. May be seated. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Away in the manger. Amen. <clears throat> Away in the manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked. to live with Jesus in heaven. Hallelujah. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, isn't it? Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the 
service and just take the uh, offerings before the Lord. Uh, Brother Bruce, could you just lead us in that? Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you, Father. We thank you for all the blessings you've given to us. Lord, may we just bless you. May we give back to you. I pray you receive our offerings, receive our tithes, receive the missionary offerings. Lord, whatever we place, Father, before you, we pray you'll multiply it and meet the need. May you just bless the giver, Lord. Lord, we just love you and we thank you for all things. In Jesus Christ's name we ask you. Amen. How many wants to be a sanctuary for his word tonight? Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Thanks. 
sanctuary for you, just for you, Lord. have thanksgiving in our hearts and let's just thank the Lord for what he's going to do for us. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, tonight that, Lord, we can look to you, Lord, that we can look to your word and find ourselves in it. And we just ask, Lord, tonight that you would just have, Lord, revelation for us, Lord, that through your word, we could draw a nigh to you, Lord. And we just pray, Lord, that you, Lord, fill our bodies, Lord, with the Holy Ghost, that we could be living sanctuaries out in you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's just sing that again. For you, just for him. Lord, sanctuary for the enemy we just didn't realize it and now to know that all that time we were doing exactly what the devil wanted us to do we've been born again converted come into this new walk and it is an honor to be a sanctuary for the Lord amen, amen. well God bless you we're we're a few in number we're our hearts go out to those who are battling the different sicknesses and things. Let's approach the Lord in a word of prayer before we get into his word tonight. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you've given us strength and health to be here in your house today. We thank you for watching over us in our travels and just bringing us here this moment, Lord, and our, our prayer Together, Lord, this part of the body that's here is, is praying for the other part of the, the body that is not here tonight, that you would be with each and every family, that you would be with each and every member that's uh, hurting at this moment, that's uh, going through uh, this uh, affliction and, and sickness. And we just pray, Father, that you would raise up a standard against the enemy. Father, that you would put a hedge of protection around your children today, Father. May you, your grace be with each and every one, we pray. And now, Lord, as we look into the scriptures today, we pray, Father, that you would just bless your, your church, Father, for, Lord, we're, we're unworthy to even approach you, uh, unworthy to look upon thy word. And 
Yet, Lord, we're looking to you and asking that your mercies would be upon us. Father, that you would prosper this little church, Lord, that you would help us to to be a more healthy church, that, to function in a way that when you look down upon us, you would be pleased with how we handle things here, Lord. We need you to come and, and just help us to mature, Father. We commit this service into your hands and we give you the praise and honor for all these things now, for we ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, we want to continue in this uh, series functioning uh, of a healthy uh, body and we want to take our, our scriptures once again from Ephesians chapter 4 verses 15 and 16 because there's a lot in these, these scriptures and if we um, continue to go over them we would just get more and more out of them. Amen. Amen. It's been about a month since we we started with, uh, or that we last spoke on, on this. But here it says in verse 15, the Paul speaking to the Ephesian church age, which we know was a mature church, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body that you and I fitly join together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Amen. God bless you. you. May be seated. Now, if you can just uh, imagine for a moment that the whole church would be filled, there'd be somebody in every seat. And you would be sitting amongst others who, if, when you look to your left, uh, that person, you and that person, there, there would be a joint there. When you look to your right, that would be a joint there. And we're connected with one another. We're a body. And we've been given this word to, to grow up and handle things the way that Christ would in, 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 in supplying what is needed in that joint with that person. And so that's, I, 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 we all struggle at times of, of having um, good relationships or working out situations. Sometimes we struggle and we have a, a hard time getting along and, and making a situation be win-win in our homes or in our jobs or family members. And, and it's no different than here in church. And to be honest with you, if you're very good at working out problems in, in, in your home, you're pretty good at working out things in a church. You're better all. You're better able to work out things in a church because the same, the same, um, the same things that you use to work out problems in a home are, are the same things that you use to work out problems in a church. In other words, when you're working out a problem in in the home. If, if me being ahead, I could not go to my, my wife all the time and say, you better listen to me. I'm the head of the home. What I say goes, and I don't care what you got to say. That, that, that wouldn't work, right? Okay, so that don't work in church. Just because we tell somebody the word, we need to speak the truth in love. So God has to be behind it, Amen. So in part one, we talked about recognizing our spiritual position. So as Brother Branham taught us, we've got to find ourselves in the scriptures. Uh, so one day I found myself in the scripture. I was a sinner. I was going to hell and I needed salvation. And, and God justified me. And then I, I found myself in the scriptures again that I was justified, but I, I wasn't living a, a sanctified life. There was a lot of stuff still in my life that was hanging on and, and bad habits and evil things. And uh, I, had to, I had to find what the answer was to help me with my 
my position that I, that I recognized in the scriptures and that I needed to live a sanctified light. I needed to start putting things away and I needed to start doing, adding the right things to my life. And, and then after I became sanctified, I, I, I had to find myself in the scriptures again because I was missing the Holy Ghost. Even though I was living a clean life, I, I was still missing the, 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 the Lord Jesus Christ filling my heart with joy every day to serve him and to, to give my life to him. Because I could be justified and sanctified and still not live for God. You're, you're, that when you got the Holy Ghost, when you are filled, sealed with the Holy Ghost, you are living for God. Amen. That's just, just all there is to it. So we've got to, we've got to find ourselves in the Scriptures. And then as, as we find ourselves in the Scriptures, we recognize that there's other people in the church who are in they're doing the same thing we're doing. They're finding themselves in the scriptures and they're trying to become more like Christ. And then we have to learn to get along with them. Amen. We have to learn to grow and discern the rest of the body it, and, and not have uh, thoughts of this person is a little bit, you know, off. You wouldn't want thoughts like that. If anything, I'm off. So we have a spiritual position in the church body. Now, many people think of a spiritual position as someone who's a pastor or a deacon, a teacher, uh, some sort of leader. It's like an official office that's recognized by the church. And I'm not talking that that's not a spiritual position that I'm talking about. We may not all have an office in the church, but we all have a spiritual position in the church. And God has called each of us to spiritually edify every part of the body of Christ in love. We just read that. He wants us to be a spiritual supplier to others and to, to, to give a measure to help every person that would be in need. And you don't got to talk to somebody very long. You, we should be able to be recognizing there's something there that we can help with. And we just, we walk into that. The focus has to be turned towards others. That's what makes a healthy body is when we're, when we're, when we're thinking of others. So we must believe and we must recognize that, that there is, number one, a spiritual position for us in the church. And it doesn't have anything to do with us, with what we want, with what we got going on in life. It has everything to do with what God has going on in the church and we're to fit into that. So in order to recognize it, we have to be spiritually minded. We have to have spiritual eyesight and then once we recognize it we can begin to step into it because we've just read you know we're supposed to love one another and we're supposed to be connected and 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 supply well that's great i recognize that but but and now i got to step into it now i got to start doing it Amen. That, that's a lot harder it takes a a lot more of the mind of christ we just can't come into church at the last minute, not be prepared, and, and, and think that, you know, we're going to spiritually be in our position. We can't have the world hanging on us. We've got to spend some time in, in prayer and, and, and get prepared. So when we step into our spiritual position, we're stepping into the realm of helping others. Don't ever forget that statement. Amen. You're stepping into a realm of helping others. You've left yourself, and now you're stepping in to helping others. It's not about ourselves. It's not about edifying ourselves. It's, it's, it's about others. We mentioned one of the greatest enemies of, of uh, stepping into our position was selfishness. I'm just recapping a little bit. I hope that's okay. One of the biggest reasons a, a church is not healthy is because of selfishness. It's the same thing with the marriage. You get in a marriage, and if, if one of the persons is, is, is extremely selfish, it puts all the responsibility on the one person that's not. 
And, and so it, it'll, it'll, uh, it's an ad, to me, selfishness can be like, it's like an attitude. And <laughs> in other words, the attitude is all about me, all about what I want. And it will break a marriage. It'll break a company. It'll break a church. It'll break whatever it, 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 it's around. Too often people walk in the vanity of their mind and not thinking about others. Selfishness and pride will blind us from being able to actually see nor step in our spiritual position. Because, I mean, imagine coming to church and if the whole thing you did was talk about you. Just for a moment, think about that. Then church would become about you. But we're a body. To go ahead and ignore the body is to ignore Christ. Right? Because heaven was not made just for me. Heaven was made for the whole body of Christ. And so we have to be more conscious of the whole body. And that's, that takes, I believe... The mind of Christ. So we, I want to read this again. It's in Philippians chapter 2. Because this not only helps us in stepping into our, our position, having the mind of Christ about to step into it, but it also is going to uh, help us in, in, our, in, our, in our, our part three of caring enough about the body of Christ. And that's really what part three is going to be, is we have to care enough. <clears throat> if, if we don't care enough, we're going to stop short. So Philippians chapter two, starting with verse number one, if there be any, therefore any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, any fellowship of the spirit, any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy and be like minded. So we want to be a healthy church, be like minded. I don't want you to, to, to believe in me liking Fords or, or blueberry pie or, or chicken without bones in it. That's not the like-minded that I want or wearing ties or not wearing ties or nothing like that. The, what we need to be like-minded with was what does the word require of us? Amen. What does the word require of us? That, that being like-minded. Having, look at the same love. That means I don't want you to have my love. And I don't want your love. <laughs> but we both want the love of God. Because that will get the job done. Being of one accord and one mind. So one love, one accord, one mind, like-minded. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Okay. That, that, would not be, that would not be Christ. Right? That, that's not the mind of Christ. But in lowliness of mind, let each person talk about the other person better than themselves. So this is what makes a healthy church. I just kind of, if I could just say something for a moment. At my work, I learned a lot having a business. <laughs> Amen. And I had employees working for me. And I still got... Many of the same employees, of course, we had some retire. But one, he's really like one of my favorites. His name is David Bailey. And uh, God willing, he, he may come here um, and, 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 and visit, uh, maybe for this weekend. But um, um, once in a while, you know, we would kid around with one another. And I noticed that when there would be a, 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 a sarcastic comments going back and forth, it could create an atmosphere where eventually somebody gets hurt. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Eventually somebody gets hurt. But then we started esteeming the other better than ourselves. We started complimenting one another Every time we were working on something, every time we did something, and you know what? We just kept building one another up, building one another up, and the atmosphere in the, in the shop was so much more beautiful because we followed the Word. We followed the Word. It was the mind of Christ to be in unison. You don't lose anything by building somebody up. 
you gain. You gain Christ because Christ is, is pleased with that. It says, look not every man on his own things, but every man on the things of others. Imagine that you're coming in and everybody's wanting to know about you. What's going on? How can I help? Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. In other words, that was the mind that was in Christ. And so if we want a healthy church, we have got to let this mind be in us personally. Now, don't wait for it to happen in somebody else. Come on, don't do that. Don't wait till everybody around you has got the mind of Christ before you start trying. Don't do that. Because the devil's going to show you lots of problems, lots of things, and you just got to step up into your position and be what Christ wants you to be. Be the first one on the block that says, I'm, gonna, I'm going to have the mind of Christ. I'm going to help uh, a situation that nobody else would help. Amen. Amen. All right. Who, being in the form of God, thought not robbery to be equal to God, made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men. So imagine having a conversation that your conversation never talks about how good you are. That's what Christ did. And he took upon him the form of a servant. Verse 8, and being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself. There's, there is the humble mind of Christ right there. We want a healthy church? Everybody you talk to, let them see the humility of Christ. Let them see that humble mind. Because you'll recognize how you can help people if you humble. And he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. I just love that, that, that scripture. We, we, we need the mind of Christ, the humble mind of Christ, in order to function as a healthy body. And it needs to be the body. We can't have favorites. You can't have favorites. That's like putting peacock feathers. That's like trying to be a, 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 a good show Christian at certain times. You can't pick and choose who you want to help. The mind of Christ has no respect of persons. If you're favoring certain people in the church, or, listen to this, or you're ignoring others in the church, you won't be able to supply every joint. If we just read, we need to supply every joint. We won't be able to effectually work in the measure of every part, because that's what the scripture says. If you're pulling favorites, or you're ignoring some, hey, how can Christ use you to help the whole body? God doesn't want us to just fitly join together with a few of our friends. No, sir. He wants us to fitly join together with everyone. That's a healthy body. So I want to title this this morning, caring, or this, this evening, caring enough to add to the body. Caring enough to add to the body. Now, that seems like a, uh, like a pretty, almost like a, a harsh statement because we all feel we care, Right? But you just look back at how many times that you, you stopped caring about a situation. And you had an excuse. Well, what they said, what they did, what they didn't say, what they didn't. How they ignored me, how they treated me. And it all boiled down to, did we care enough to help the body? We've got to care enough to be like-minded, to have the same love to be of one mind, one accord. We've got to care enough to not let anything be done through uh, strife or vainglory. We've got to care enough to actually get out of ourselves and start esteeming others better than ourselves. Brother Brandon preached a message, convinced and then concerned. We have to be convinced that what, we're, what we read tonight, our opening scripture, these two verses, that this subject that we're working on, function as a healthy body, we need to be convinced that this is God's will for our lives. Yes. 
Because unless we're convinced of it, we will never be concerned. We'll never grow up in him in all things. We've got to say this is not Brother John's desire for the church. We've got to say, we've got to find our position in the scriptures that this is what God wants for the body. And this is what, what this, this teaching is for. Now, spiritual maturity. How many feels you're spiritually mature? All right. This is the John Martin definition, spiritual maturity is manifested when we trust God for our life and our focus is on edifying others in love. Amen. That's true maturity. We don't have to worry about ourselves. God's going to take care of us. We just got one job to do, and that's edify the body. Amen. Jesus said, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. And he, he told Peter that, when thou art converted, when there's a spiritual maturity there, then strengthen thy brethren. It's not about you, Peter. It's about the brethren. Amen. So, what does the scripture tell us? Uh, what, what we should do when a brother is overtaken in a fault? Galatians chapter 6. He which is spiritual. Right. Spiritual maturity. Go to them in a spirit of meekness. You, you can't turn it on and off like a switch, by the way. Meekness is a part of the Holy Ghost. Right. Amen. And so that word meekness, if you look it up, it means gentleness and humility. So if we're going to help somebody, we don't got to be, we don't got to just know the scriptures. We don't just tell them what's right or wrong. We've got to have a certain type of spirit. It's, we've got to be gentle and it, we've got to be humble. We still have to deal with the problem, but if you don't have those two ingredients, it's probably going to backfire. Right. Sometimes we find ourselves correcting problems with a wrong spirit. Instead of a spirit of meekness, sometimes we're using a self-righteous spirit. Maybe we're just arrogant or, and, and proud and, and we know that we're right. And, and, and we think because we're speaking the word that it's going to correct the problem. But the thing is, it's missing the love. Right. Amen. Sometimes we got a sharp tongue or using worldly wisdom or just depending on our knowledge of what's right and wrong. We've been guilty of these things, have we not? Now, here's another thing how sometimes we, we go about correcting a problem. We simply avoid the situation altogether. We just walk away, wash our hands about it, just don't, don't, don't deal with it. That's not healthy. That, that's still a sore in the body. And that's not how healthy body functions. Well, wait a, wait a minute, Brother John, I got to just look. Look, if I say something, I'm going to make the matter worse. Come on. Is that true? How many times have we thought that? How many, I've heard that many times from a lot of people. Yes, we don't want to make the matters worse. I'm total for that. but we're still a ways off from spiritual maturity. That's no excuse not to get mature. It just shows the condition that we don't know how to deal with it. And I understand that, you know, I wasn't brought up by Christian parents. I wasn't. And I was certainly not brought up, this is how you handle a problem. Just the opposite. But I do believe that God in you teaches you how to be. And we need faith that God will teach us. The first thing that we need, I'm talking, when the children of Israel, they came out of Egypt and God told them to go into the, the promised land. What, what, what did they fear? They feared the giants. They did not think they could do what they were asked to do by God. Okay, so here we are in the church. We're trying to learn to function with people that don't see things the way we see them, that, 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 are, that, are, that are odd, that are different. 
that, that we're going to maybe, we don't want to hurt them, we don't want to offend them. But you know, the first thing we need is we need to believe that Christ in us can do it. Even if we don't know how. We need to have faith that Christ in us will help us. Because to me, this is, you know, to me, it don't matter what you believe. It don't matter what revelation you got. If Christ cannot live through your body and handle problems, what good is it? What good is what good is what you have? So it's not about what you know. It's about what you live. Now, if we always feel hesitant about trying to handle a problem, when are we, how will we ever mature? Right? How, how will we ever get to the place that we can handle something? We've got to be able to, 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 to walk into a situation and do our very best. And when we fail, I learn from the Holy Ghost what to do next time. But if we don't do that, if we're always staying hesitant, we're, you know, we're, we're going to, you know, we're going to let, you know, Brother Ron do it or we're going to let Brother Dennis handle it. How will I be able to handle anything? If God puts a situation in front of me, I believe God in me can, can, can take care of the problem. And I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay with getting help. But I'm not okay with getting somebody else to take care of it. There's a difference. There is a difference. Now, another reason we don't want to deal with things is we're just simply afraid. But the answer to that is the same. Love. Perfect love casteth out all fear. When you're so full of the love of God, you're not scared about getting your hands dirty. God's love is the answer to care enough to help the church body. That is what we need, more of the love of God. Amen. Functioning as a healthy church body requires spiritual believers that are filled with the love of God. We just can't come into church, somebody hurts us, somebody offends us, somebody does something wrong, and we're all bothered about it. And, 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 and we're okay being bothered about it because we didn't do the wrong thing. No, what is required is for you to be filled with God's love. Because God's love has the answer. Amen. God's love has the answer. God isn't asking us to just barely get along with one another. Just tolerate one another. Just barely. No, he's asking us to be fitly joined together. One mind, one accord, one love. Amen. His love. Yeah. My love don't do the job. <laughs> it's, it has a limit. It'll stop. But God's love right. will take care of all things. Amen. He wants us to grow up in Him in all things. All things. Not all things except this. Don't ever say, I, I, I can handle just about it, but I just can't handle Don't say that. Believe that God wants to give you more love, more wisdom, Amen. more leadership. Amen. He wants to give you this experience. Amen. He wants you to make increase Amen. of the situation. Bring some good resolution to bring some edification to this situation that just seems to be uh, spoiled. And we need a humble mind of Christ to do it. Spiritual maturity, it requires getting our hands dirty. Amen. When Jesus looked at his disciples, he said, you don't know. You don't know what I just did by washing your feet. But I'm cleaning your feet. Now, Peter, you know, obviously being carnal, didn't understand. And without the grace of God, I'd probably be in the same spot. Lord, wash me all over. But he didn't need wash all over. Right? But you do end up stepping into situations that are just dirty. You end up making mistakes. You end up falling short. 
you end up stumbling. You end up walking in areas you shouldn't walk. Amen. And we are told by the Lord Jesus Christ to wash one another's feet. Amen. That means to take time and help somebody that's having a, 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 a hard time spiritually. Spiritually, because it's a spiritual position. Too much we focus on, help me with this natural thing. Well, you take any natural thing, and there you can get to the spirit behind it. You, you, you certainly can. Now, when there's a problem, if our go-to plan is to get upset or bothered or correct a person out of frustration or just default, walk away, we're simply not caring enough. So this is, this is really important for part three because if we don't get part three right, we're not going to be able to do part four. And part four is the actual functioning in a healthy way. But if we don't have enough love behind it, if we got all these excuses of why we're not going to move forward with it, we're going to miss. We need to shift our focus to loving one another more, Amen. to loving the whole body, to edifying the whole body, to care enough to help. Don't just say, well, I'll care as long as they don't do this. Whatever it takes, the love of God has no limit. Right? It endures all things. It believes all things. It's forever. It's eternal. It doesn't stop. It doesn't quit. Amen. And that's why we need his love when we're trying to function with one another in the body of Christ. Amen. Spiritual maturity isn't just for you and your family. Amen, Brother John. I didn't hear any amen, so I wanted to say that, you know. It's about edifying the body of of Christ in love. You see, we have a spiritual family here. Amen. You know, why would you care so much about your natural family and you didn't care about your spiritual family? Right. We need to supply every joint in the spiritual family with what it needs. So we got to turn our focus on what, what do others need? And that's why I say it's a spiritual position. It isn't somebody for who's, who's not spiritual. This is going to go over the top of their head. This is going to be like, I, I'm not there yet. Amen. We need to grow up. That's what the scripture, we read it today, tonight. We need to grow up in him in all things. Right. Don't pick and choose what you want. Amen. Let's just, just say, Lord, you would not put anything on me that I couldn't bear. To stay with the scriptures, but with, he'll make a way for us. Amen? Amen. If our focus is just on us and our family, I'll say it like this. It's wrong. God has given us a body, and we have a responsibility to help God's body. Every single one of us. It's a spiritual family. When we ignore our responsibility, you know what we're doing? We're working iniquity. Because Brother Branham simply taught us iniquity was not doing the things that you know you should be doing. Right. Wow. Just by simply ignoring helping one another is working iniquity. Mm -hmm. Think about this. And Jesus said, and because iniquity would abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Right. The more and more you ignore doing the simple things that God has been asking you to do, the more and more you're just going to be in love with yourself. Iniquity starts off with being selfish and ends up with losing love for others. Hate, as we talked about, is on a rise in the, the world today. We know that. Love is waxing cold. And I want to say that, that that spirit out there in the world is having an effect on church natural. Yes. On church natural. Amen. And you know church natural is inside of a building that's church spiritual. Right. We know that. 
So you see there's an intermingling of hate trying to come in through church natural. But I'll tell you, church spiritual won't bite into it. No. Why? Because they are of another spirit, like Joshua and Caleb were. They were of another spirit. It's, it's not a, a matter of, 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 of reasoning. It's just, it's not right to begin with. We just don't hate one another. We love one another regardless. So when somebody does something wrong, we have a choice to make. React carnally. Well, that was wrong. Shouldn't have done it. Get upset, murmur, and even complain. Have you ever murmured and complained because somebody did something wrong? Well, God has allowed that in the church, but he doesn't allow the mistakes in the church for us to murmur and complain. Amen. He allows them so we can react in a correct way. You know, if everything had to be perfect, then we wouldn't need to be long-suffering, patient, forbearing one another. Right. We wouldn't have to be patient because we'd be in a perfect church. But there is no perfect church. The only thing that's perfect is the believers who submit themselves to the word of God and do what God wants them to do. Then the perfect God lives to them and manifest. So, but you, you, to get a group of, of believers to do that perfectly, it don't exist. But what we can do is humble ourselves and start pressing towards that mark. Amen. Recognize our position. So we can react in a more spiritual way. Pray for them. Amen. To recognize that there's a need there. And, and maybe since I see the need, God's calling me to go help this person. Well, I, I don't know what to say to them because, you know, that was like really rude what they did to me. I'll just go up to them and say, I love you. I just want to say a word of prayer with you. We don't got to diagnose everything. Maybe we could just say, hey, look, I, maybe I offended you. <laughs> maybe I did something. I'm sorry. Look, we don't maybe see eye to eye, but hey, right now I want to see heart to heart. Oh, I, want, I want Christ to be here. Amen. I want to maintain the right spirit. and I want to maintain his spirit until he brings us into the truth of the situation. Right, right. Don't wait till you, you know, See everything perfect with somebody before you have the right spirit. Amen. So if we want to function as better, function better as a healthy body, we need to care just like Jesus cares. No different. Love one another more. Live for one another. Pray for one another. Lay down our lives. Lay down our pride. Lay down our self, our arrogancy, our selfishness, our hypocrisy, and be clothed with humility. This will help us when we're dealing with problems. You know, sometimes, let's just be honest, we're struggling to know what to do. And I'm going to tell you why. It's because the spirit that's on you isn't of Christ. I'll tell you, the spirit that was on David didn't have it all figured out. You know, he didn't have some vision of how he was going to take care of Goliath when he was back taking care of the sheep for his daddy. He didn't even know what was happening, what was going on, who was this guy, why is he acting this way against the church? Sometimes there's spirits that come and they attack. But what we need is a faith to rise up in our hearts, to start dealing with things. Amen. Instead of saying, well, that's not my business, not mine. Okay, 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 it's not yours. So you're part of the body of Christ, but it's not your responsibility. So you don't have to fitly join it. You don't have to supply. You don't have to edify and love. You don't have to grow up in all things. See, see how crooked... The devil gets, and we, we become scared about just caring about one another. And look, 
us that are older understand that those that are younger than us have much more years to live before they get our wisdom, before they get our experience. The older sisters are to teach the younger sisters. Come on now. I mean, we're talking about learning how to function together. Us, us brothers got to step in. We need to come to church with a mindset of caring more for others. Just, I'm coming to church for, for others. I'm just not used to this. I'm barely making a church because I, I know I should be there. No, get rid of that. I, 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 have a, I have a position. I have a post of duty. I have a, I have a reason why I'm coming there, and I want to help somebody. Amen. Love is the one ingredient that will edify every situation. Amen. That one thing. Do you know the Bible says love covers a multitude of sin? Amen. You know, love just doesn't cover your sin. It covers your sister's sin, your brother's sin. It covers everybody's. And, and it, to me, it's an honor that God would live through me to cover somebody else's sin. It's an honor. Because I know some, God has lived through somebody else to cover my sin. Come on. You know, the Bible says if we don't forgive one another, he is not going to forgive us. Yes. It's an honor to let God come through us and live a life of love towards others, not judging whether somebody's worthy of it or not worthy of it. Who is worthy? No one's worthy of God's love. No one's worthy of God. Only time we might be thinking that somebody's worthy or unworthy it's because we're sitting in the judgment seat, yeah. comparing them with ourselves. Yes. The Bible says, charity suffereth long. This is why we need the love of God. And is kind. It envieth not. It vaunteth not itself. Is not puffed up. It doesn't behave itself unseemly. It seeketh not her own. And it's not easily provoked. And it doesn't think evil. If we just humble ourselves... I'm sure we could find our, we could find where we've missed a little bit in this scripture right here. So when we have more of God's love, we'll automatically be caring more about the body. So I, I'm thankful for the love that we have. But how many wants more of God's love? Amen. And then when that comes in, when we invite it in, we say, God, fill me with your love. We would just automatically start caring more about others. Amen. Now, God doesn't battle selfishness. A Amen. Amen. Okay. Because we want to keep going here. God does not battle selfishness. For God so loved the world that he gave. Amen. He owns everything. Everything was made by him, for him. But you know, he's not selfish. Heaven is his throne. Earth is his footstool. What house will you build him? He's a great God, but he doesn't battle selfishness. Now, one way to battle selfishness in our life is to be more thankful for what we have. Amen. God does not need to go build some more things and some planets and some stars and to do all this stuff. He already has everything. Yes. And when we are thankful for what we have, we won't battle selfishness. The Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. Yes. And a believer can become so grateful and so thankful for what they already have that they can actually live not feeling like they need anything else. When you have, when you're satisfied, when you're content with what you have, right. your life now is more open to be lived for others. Right. Amen. To help others. To care for others. Amen. See, selfishness, it's a horrible thing. Yes. Horrible thing. Amen. To me, people who are selfish, it's like they're not free from themselves. Right. And, you, and, and when, you, when they get what they want, it's, not, it's just a matter of time. They're wanting more. 
The Bible says the eye is not satisfied with, with seeing, the ear with hearing. Am I? No. No, let's see. What? I'm quoting this wrong. But I do know this, that the flesh is never satisfied. <laughs> it's just not. It's always wanting more. And so we must just be more thankful. The answer is just be more thankful. Be content with what you have. Be more thankful. Be grateful. Always praising God for what you have. Amen. Let our hearts be filled to the brim so much with gratitude that we just feel in debt to God more. Be gratefully content. <laughs> Turn with me, if you would, to 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. We have to, I want to at least get two more, three more scriptures here. Be so in love with God that you want to give to his body. You know, you remember Brother Brandon said this statement. He said, if you ever want to do something for me, do it for my children. If you really want to do something for me, do it for my children. And I'll say it like this. If you want to do something for God, do it for his children. 1 John chapter 3, verse 16 says, Hereby perceive we the love of God. Because he laid down his life for us, we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Amen. And this is just a natural thing, but I want to read it. For whosoever hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but let's do it in deed and in truth. Amen. Amen. Be so filled with thankfulness that you're, you're content. You're content, and now you, you can spend your life trying to help other people. Don't get so busy that you can't help other people. Don't look on your, your own things. Be so content that you don't have to look on your own things. Now you can start looking and trying to help somebody that isn't as spiritual as you are. Come on. Because to me, I don't care if you got one dollar or you got ten million dollars. You can't be content. But I'll say this, it's harder to be content with ten million. The more money you got, the harder it is. Because now you got more things that, are, that Satan can use to get you going away. I'm telling you, just godliness with contentment, it's the great, it's great. Yes. All right, Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy. Okay, so I know we're in the church. This person hurt you. This person did you wrong. This person, but now you as the elect of God. They may not be the elect of God, but you as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Yes. Well, they didn't say sorry yet. That's not what the Bible says. They may never say sorry. You still have a responsibility. I would not want anybody to miss heaven because I didn't want to forgive them. That would be horrible. And I don't want... I don't want to be there before the Lord. And the Lord said, you know, I'm not forgiving you of your sins because you didn't forgive A, B, C, D of their sins. That's right, That's right. So uh, to, we're talking about functioning as a healthy body. We're going to be put into uh, situations to either be forbearing or snap. Yeah. Come on. Amen. And, and, and the life of Christ is going to follow these scriptures. Right. The life of Christ, the Holy Ghost will follow these scriptures. 
And, and if, if we find ourselves not following, we just quickly, Lord, I'm sorry. I, this is what your word says. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do better next time. I'm going to make this thing right. I'm going to get up and I'm going to mar march forward. And if it happens seven times, seven times I'm going to get up. Because that's what the scripture tells me to do. All right, look at verse 14. And above all things, put on love which is the bond of perfectness. Amen. And let the peace of God ruin your heart. Yes. <laughs> In other words, don't be bothered about things that others are doing or have done or haven't done in the church. Amen. Don't, don't let that thing be inside of you. Amen. But God has peace. Peace I give unto you. Right. Amen. Let the peace of God rule. In other words, it's champ. It's yes. champ. It calls the shots <laughs> to the which also you are called in one body. Called in one body. Well, he's not listening. She's not listening. They hurt. They offended. They talked behind my back. They, 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 they. You know what? God has not made you to judge that they are not of the body. It doesn't matter what they've done. Right. We have been called to one body, so we act like one body. Now, I'm just being honest with you. God is good to the evil and to the good. Right. And if you are the elect, you will be good to the evil and to the good. Amen. And, 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 and if you're not, you're going to sit there and try to be the judge who is and who isn't. But we've been called to one body. And look at this. And be ye thankful. <laughs> and be ye thankful. Amen. We have so much to be thankful about. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Let's stand together. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms. There it is. Scripture. We need to teach and admonish one another. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Amen. 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 Wonderful scriptures. Amen. We're recognizing and we're actively stepping into our position we're coming to church with more love. We're coming to church with more concern. We're being reminded. Our pastor is telling us. Hopefully we're hearing little bits when we're listening to the message and listening to other ministers that God is calling us up higher. And in, in part four, by the, by the grace of God, we're going to be talking about putting into practice these things. We're going to be having examples of how we function with one another. Amen? Amen. Let's sing, people need the Lord. We need the Lord Jesus. Amen? Amen. People need the Lord. People need
bow our heads and close our eyes for a moment. I'm, I'm with you. My eyes aren't open either. At the end of broken dreams, God is, is the answer to every hardship, to every heartache, to every problem. He is the open door. This morning we stand here as his wife. Those that are perhaps watching through the live stream or the archive, if your head is bowed and God has spoken to you, God wants to use us. God wants to work through us to help one another. Not just not just outside people that that don't know the Lord at all, but maybe right here inside the church where people don't know the Lord as much as you do. Say, won't you let God just work through you? If that's your desire, you don't have to lift your hand, but just lift up that prayer before him. Lord, just use me. Use me to help someone in this body. Use me. Lord, when things are crashing down, when my brothers and my sisters are going through Lord, a, a hardship. Lord, use me to lead them directly to you. Work through my life, Lord. Work through my mind. Let me have the, the same love, Lord, that you have. And let me spread that love to them. Let me have their same mind of humility. Let me spread that right to them, Lord. That's your desire. I want you to believe it as we go before him in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you have a, 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 a body that you're living in today, that you're working through. And Lord, that you have, you've called us, as we heard, Lord, into your great army to work for you, to labor for you. And Lord, I pray that as we, we march forward, Lord, from this day forward, even coming into this, this new year that's before us, Lord, I pray that we'd be more determined to live for others than ever before. In a world that's, that's going in the opposite direction, that's, that hate is rising, Lord, may you just fill us so full of your spirit, of your love, that, Lord, we'll be representatives in this dark hour that you are still alive. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You still have a people on the planet that love uh, the unlovable that 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 can can lay down their lives just as you lay down your life for the world. Grant it, Lord. We commit ourselves to you, Lord. Every every heart, Lord, each one that's yearning and desiring this, we we commit them to you, Lord. And we give you the praise and honor. We're looking forward, Lord, to to being more in your image and maturing. Lord, and, and, and functioning and, and being able to operate here as a, as a healthy church. Not that we're not healthy right now. Not by no means, Lord, do we feel that or we think that. But Lord, we know that you're calling us up higher. And Lord, that there's so much more uh, uh, of a spiritual position for us to get into, to function in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a way that we would grow up in, in other things that we haven't grown up in. Oh, Lord, we thank you now. We 